Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? It's going to be a short, sweet, and quick video. So this is how to do affirmations correctly. Um, if you come across this, you probably got introduced to the idea through affirmations, whether it be through uh, a networking group that you're in, maybe a company, or maybe you were just in the self-help section because everybody wants to become great and be their greatest version. But how do you do affirmations correctly? Now, what is the principle of affirmations? Basically, we already do this already on an unconscious level as far as Tony Robbins says incantations. And he gives an example of a person, if you're in the kitchen, and let's say you have a brother, sister, spouse, significant other who says, hey, can you find the salt? And you have an, act, an incantation, oh, I can't find the salt, I don't know where the salt is, I don't know where the salt is. You haven't looked yet, right? But you keep saying this, and then you walk to the cupboard, and they're like, oh, it's in the cupboard. You're just like, okay, you go over there, and you're like, I don't know where the salt is, I don't know where the salt is. And then they walk over there, and they pick it up, and it's right in front of your face. Has this ever happened to you? Most likely it has. Literally what happened was a scotoma, basically called a blind spot. Because you incanted these words over and over and over again with emotion, your brain literally blocked it out. So how can you use this to your advantage? You can affirm certain beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors within you to get the results that you want in this life. Now, a lot of people will talk bad about affirmations, but here's the story. Have you ever heard or seen somebody who was very, very competent in a specific area in their life, but they never showed it or they never lived up to their expectation? The reason is, from I've heard from other people, is they internally don't believe that they can do it. Even though they may have the skill and the ability, they do not believe that they can do it. And an example for me is I grew up playing basketball predominantly. And football, I feel personally I was a lot better in basketball in certain aspects growing up. But the thing is, I had an internal um, belief about myself with low self-esteem, right? I got really, really nervous when I'd get on the court in front of a bunch of people. But what's interesting, when I would play football, I had the helmet on, I kind of blended in, and I really didn't care too much. And I had the belief was, you know, if I made a mistake, oh, great, I'll get back to it and, and be better next time. I had, I had different belief systems. So the thing is, you have to change your beliefs, your attitudes, and your feelings about a certain subject before you change the outcome. In the book, by it's called As a Man Thinketh. It talks about this. If a man is unwilling to change himself, if a man is willing to change his circumstances without changing himself, he therefore he will remain bound. So it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter how bad you want to change an outside circumstance. If you don't internally believe inside if you don't have feelings and beliefs, a foundation inside that's congruent with your expectations outside, it won't happen. Another guy, he's a great networker in the industry. He talks about this and his talks, he refer, references behavioral psychology from Tony Robbins. And he says that if you ever have a skyscraper, just know that if you look below the cement level, the foundation is twice as deep as it is high. So you have to have deep-rooted beliefs and attitudes that are favorable to your outcome that you want. So that's where affirmations come into contact. You have to affirm certain beliefs and attitudes. And here's the cool thing. You don't necessarily have to believe it up front. Because there's a saying, there's an old saying that says, if you say a lie long enough and loud enough, sooner, sooner or later you'll start to believe it. So why not speak things over your life and say things with absolute emotion, feeling good about it, that you want to happen? Now, you may not believe it the first couple of days, the first week, the first two weeks, but if you continuously affirm it and say it over and over and over again, you're going to start believing it and start acting in accordance with that belief. So that's the power and that's why affirmations. So I wanted to cover that base before I get into how to do affirmations, but here's something that I've discovered on how to do it. So hopefully you've understood exactly what, I'm, what I explained earlier. It's basically you want to get into a quiet place. You want to get to a place where you can be alone, away from distractions. And you don't necessarily have to sit there and meditate for 20, 30 minutes. But you do have to take some deep breaths and get into a relaxed emotional state. And then you want to say your emotions with conviction and absolute uh, emotion. You want to say your affirmations. And you want to speak them as in the present as if it's already happening. Now, most people say you want to speak your goals. But the thing is, that's still considered like here's the goals, the top of the skyscraper, and here are the beliefs and attitudes. 
So most importantly, I would suggest speak and have affirmations of the beliefs and attitudes on a specific subject. So how do you know you how do you know which subject to talk about? Look at your life. If you're not succeeding in a specific area, and especially if you've studied, went to school for, have the skills for it, but you're still not succeeding, that means that there's some internal belief or attitude going around about that specific subject or topic that you have to address. Now, you don't necessarily have to go back 30 years ago, 20 years ago when you were a child, but you do have to impress new thoughts and ideas upon your subconscious. Now, in Think and Grow Rich, in, in Sex Transmutation, it talks about that in that chapter, about how to stimulate the subconscious mind. There's lots of ways to do that. The most powerful is sex. Then you have love. Then you have music. Then you have money. You have all these stimulants. They even have narcotics and alcohol. Now, those are the detrimental ones. But you have to have a way to stimulate yourself far as the subconscious mind and then impress thoughts upon it. So a tip, if you want to say your affirmations in a recorder and have emotional music playing in the background, right? That's a way to get into your subconscious. Another technique in the magic of believing is the mirror technique. Speak your affirmations directly into a mirror where you look yourself in the eye and you say what you want or you say the beliefs you want to have. So let's say for the topic, most people are interested in having more money and abundance in their life. So for example, I would say, I like money. I believe that money is important. I believe that money is valuable. I am grateful for all the money that I have right now in my life. I choose wealth and abundance. I choose to become rich. Now, for some people, that may rub you the wrong way. But if you continue to say these affirmations over and over and over again, it will become automatic. It will change the way you feel. It will change your belief about the topic. And then automatically it will flow and change the, um, change the result. So I'll leave it short at that, seven minutes. But also another tip is read biographies. All right, how the unconscious works. Remember, 10% is the unconscious. 90% is the unconscious. And how is the unconscious affected? By being stimulated through sex, love, impressed upon thoughts with those stimulants, and the key is biographies as well. Have you ever seen yourself in, you're in a movie, basically you're in trance for about an hour to two hours, right? You completely suspend all other aspects of what's going on in the external world because you're so locked in. The same thing about a biography. If you're reading a great biography, you kind of get wrapped and swept up into the book to the story where you start feeling what they feel you start seeing what they see and you ever heard somebody try to get you out of that trance somebody say hey can you go get this or hey are you there and you don't you hear them but you don't hear them because you're so wrapped in attention into what this book or this movie is right that's because you're literally in an unconscious state and those words and those thoughts and those beliefs are being imprinted upon your own brain through those stories that's why stories are so powerful. So in closing, why don't you create a story that'll be, that'll be favorable to the life that you want? And a great tip is affirmations. So hopefully this was, gave you a lot of value today. Affirmations are absolutely powerful, but consistency is key. Because remember, when you were a child up to about six, seven years old, you basically your brain was basically open. The, the conscious brain wasn't guarding anything. So your unconscious was open. So you got a lot of beliefs, attitudes, thoughts, imagery from the surrounding environment. So what you have to do is you have to be consistent over time and speak things that what you want to happen in your life. Thank you guys. See you later. Have a great day. Use your affirmations. Here's a few books. Magic of Believing, Power of the Subconscious Mind, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, let's see. What's another book? any biography on any topic that you want to change in your life, right? Uh, there's a book that was recommended to me. I haven't read it yet, Hung by the Tongue. What you speak, what you say is what you get. So thank you for watching this. See you later. Have a fantastic day. Peace.